we now support performance within Android as well. We have the APIs, you can create custom, custom uh, instrumentation, you can surface transactions, and we have auto instrumentation on the activity level, and you're gonna see a lot more coming there, just like you've seen with uh, the other frameworks and such. So I'm gonna go ahead and demo this real quick. So here with Android, setup is pretty simple. In our build.gradle, let me go ahead and pull up code side by side once again. In our build.gradle, we go ahead and specify sentry. And I've done that as such. And then we want to set our DSN as well in our Android manifest. Android manifest. I've done that as well. And now let's go ahead and set up release help, which is pretty simple. So if I go into here, it's gonna be automatically enabled, but we can opt out of it. And let's go ahead and check our Sentry init code as well. So Sorry about that. Right here, sentry.init. And we have everything configured here. So it's just going to have errors and sessions uh, turned on by default. And lastly, we want to set up performance monitoring here. So we go into here, set up the traces sample rate as we're used to in the Android manifest once again. And that's done so right over here. And we're all set. So next is just the included instrumentation. So I mentioned by default, we're going to capture uh, the activities and there's going to be more coming uh, here. And then we have the custom instrumentation as well. So this is pretty easy. This is just start transaction and then finish it. And then when you have any spans, you can set those as well. So if we take a look here, you can retrieve the span uh, using sentry.getspan and then start child and, and track accordingly as well. I mentioned how to retrieve a transaction, which is the sentry.getspan. And we'll automatically connect any errors with spans as well. So this is pretty universal in any of our performance offerings, right? Uh, we're showing you the transaction. If there were any related errors, you'll also see that correlated in the interface. So I'm all set up here. So I'm gonna go ahead to my Android project and let's go ahead and start kind of looking at things here. Android. Let me go ahead and look at release 1.7. And let's just look at this at the high level. So before the performance update, once again, I would have only seen the session information and the issue information, but now I'm also going to see the transaction information. So I'm gonna go ahead, head over to performance. Let's take a look at one of these activities. And these are gonna be pretty plain by design. So it's gonna have the navigation and then any of the spans that you did from there. And let's go ahead and also look at some of the custom instrumentation that we've done here. So here we're tracking activity loads and then the checkout is gonna be the more interesting one here. Here is a HTTP request that we are tracking via manual instrumentation. And we can see that there are errors as part of the span and we can then go ahead and dive into there. But now all in all, we have performance data being spent, uh, sent up to Sentry. Uh, there's gonna be more auto instrumentation like I mentioned, but this is what we got for now so that you all can get started and understanding slowdowns in Android land in addition to just what's broken and uh, release adoption. Last thing that I wanna show is our attachments capabilities. 
pull up my relevant link for that. We'll go in from there. And have you ever found yourself, you know, debugging and you're like, hey, Sentry gives me a bunch of context, right? The stack trace, the breadcrumbs, it gives me uh, all the structured information that's in an aggregated format. But it would be great if I had the screenshot of, you know, what the user experience was. It would be great if I had some extra log file or, you know, a, a copy of the local database or something like that in the case of, of mobile. Um, well, now you can attach attachments to uh, your events and we'll go ahead and store them so that you can understand what crashed, what went wrong, and what was the state of things via any of those attachments. So this is really easy to use. Uh, you're just gonna go ahead and just add the attachment uh, to the scope and it'll get up and running. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in Android land real quick. So if we go into here and go into here, let's go to my attachment. Here, what I'm doing is creating an attachment right here. It's a temp file. And here, here. I'm writing out some JSON to log.json and I'm doing sentry.configure scope, scope.add attachment. And let's look at the result of this here. So if I go to sentry once again, my oh, we're there. Go ahead and take a look at this issue. If I scroll down here, right, what I will see is the attachment, the log.json and that temp file. Uh, if this was a previewable file, I could click preview and kind of see what's going on directly with this, this interface. Otherwise, go ahead and download and additionally triage. So very useful for understanding, uh, you know, where, what the current state was, if the structured information or any context that you have attached here uh, is not going to tell you, and it might be a longer form uh, that, that, that you should attach as well.